Welcome back to the Thanks for Rolling podcast. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Jeff. I am here with my co-host, Pat, and two very special guests. guests. <laughs> he added. Yeah, very oh, special. Yeah. yeah. Very, yeah. very. Coach Greg Souders, welcome. Thank you, sir. No Schaffner, welcome. Our yep. second, uh, or your second appearance on the pod. That's right. Following up the most watched pod in or episode in the history yeah, of the podcast. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. R- riding yeah. on DeAndre's coattails. You must oh, be very, sure. very yeah. popular, sir. Yep, yep. We <laughs> love DeAndre. We hate Noah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I concur. That's what we're here to get to the bottom of is who uh, does Greg like better? <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're going to talk yeah. about. <laughs> so Probably the guy closer winning to trials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's not like that. I mean, DeAndre is my favorite grappler on earth. Uh, he happens to be my student. I'm lucky. Yeah, yeah. But Noah's gonna gonna break the mold and follow and take away everything that That's I'm leaving plan. leaving That's behind. Yeah, we'll talk about that, right? I think we we had you on last time. We talked about the fact that you didn't know any other method no. than than working with Greg, right? Yeah, yeah. DeAndre came from, you know, a more traditional mm-hmm. uh background of jujitsu, right. right? So we'll talk about that a little bit. But um so Greg is here for the pat named Echo Palooza yeah, that we're having here. Ten ten planet Springfield. So <laughs> Greg was, uh, I screwed up and um, didn't hit record the first time. And Greg was saying he had wants to take no accountability for that name. <laughs> so we'll put it right on Pat. <laughs> I'll take it on the record. Fine. I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, would, thanks for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Thank of you. Course. I would have called it the only right way to learn anything ever seminar. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> totally fucking around. We'll do that for a version two. <laughs> we uh, debated about dogmatic. whether or not we would come in here and sit down and be like, Greg, tell us about drilling. No. <laughs> <laughs> immediately push the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I know it's so funny. It's like we've talked about this shit so much at this point. It's like it almost feels like, oh, yeah. If you're still into thinking that repeating the same movement over and over again is going to make you good at it, then you're just, you're lost. You're 50 years behind. But that's okay. So, you know, yeah. some people like to be traditional. <clears throat> yeah. There's some yeah. comfort in what you've yeah. always yeah. known and what you've always been shown, right? Yeah. We, I mean, we know that comfort makes the strongest, most successful people. Oh, yeah. Right. right. For right. sure. Right. Yeah. Lying to yourself is really good for your mental health. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not pushing the boundaries in any way, right? Yeah, of course not, not at all. Why would we? Definitely. Right, right, Let's right. all stay the same. Right. Yes. Do you want to give like a two second spiel about why we're all here and then <clears throat> we'll get into it? Yeah. So, was it, it was last episode. Um, we recorded with two Denise episodes two episodes ago. We recorded with Denise, Aaron, and Rob. Um, the four of us kind of put together this camp. We had just met through um, you know, various communities. Denise and I met 10 years ago and she um, came through Phoenix when I was training out there. Um, you know, Rob's local, so we've known each other for a while. And then Aaron started the ecological dynamics for submission grappling discord group. So, um, we all got together through there and it was actually after, um, we saw you guys at the finishers camp. I was like, oh shit, this was fun. Like, it'd be cool to just have a training camp of whatever sorts. Like we were going to kind of do it same style, just like bring in a bunch of people for seminars. And then Aaron was like, Hey, I've been, it's been one of my goals to have a, like, uh, my own training camp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, I have a place we can use. <laughs> yeah. So we just, you know, put it together that way. So that's right. Um, here we are. We started working through our list of who we wanted. Obviously, Greg, you hit the top of the list. Like, you know, I feel like most of the people here, that was the the ticket they were coming for. Um, then we got some, you know, other great coaches here as well, and um, fun community up there. Lots of people eager to learn. Yeah. For I took sure. a picture. I'm like, I've never seen a mat full of jujitsu people in street clothes all yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and that's that's the, I was so surprised and it was it's such an enjoyable experience looking out at the crowd. I mean, everyone came here for whatever their own reason was, but they were completely invested. You know what I mean? And that's a good sign. They were here hungry for the information. They wanted something different because we can all sense there's some type of thing that needs to be changed, but we're just all unsure of, of which direction to go in. And this sounds like a promising direction. Man, they were fully committed, man. It was just awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm also self-conscious about informational seminars because I like actual working, uh, you know, engage, touch each other, see how it actually works. Let's, let's not just talk about it, but even just talking about it, man, everyone was there. Nobody was picking the toes. So yeah, that was, man, was yeah I mean, that session could have gone on for hours longer yeah. if... For sure. We didn't cut it off to, to move on with the rest of the schedule. Like nobody was fading out and looking around and staring off in space. Everyone was yeah. engaged. In, I mean, you had to cut off the questions because it was just For sure. going and going. So yeah. that was awesome. And that's good, man. You know, it, it really is. Because, you know, you have all a div- people on all different sides of this thing. People who resist it because they know nothing about it. People who don't care. But then you have a small group that just wants something different, man. Want a different experience in the training environment. And these are the guys. And so hopefully we can start something, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's a lot of the group we have here too, is during um, this last session here with Ed Ingemel, is it one of the people in the audience like asked for a show of hands, like who's, who's just a, a coach that's trying to, to make some traction with teaching a different way within somebody else's academy. And it was probably two thirds of the group that's here. Yeah. Right. Like you and I talked about yesterday for me, it was easy. I'm like, I, 
I don't have to answer to an owner or another coach. I just made the decision overnight that here's what we're doing. For sure. But these people that, you know, they're a brown belt, maybe even a black belt, but they're in somebody else's gym. They can't just Mm, make that change. They don't have as much autonomy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That really sucks, man. Because For sure. it's like you're, you, you, the, the limit of progress you can make as a coach is contingent on someone else's beliefs about how it works. <laughs> like, isn't that tough? Yeah. You know what I mean? You could be working for someone and doing a decent job and notice there's something wrong but not have the capacity to do anything about it. What kind of hamstringing is that? That's crazy shit. And I mean, and this is the kind of traditionalism that holds any environment back. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because the whole jujitsu thing was to be non-traditional. It's to, let's see what really works. Let's get into fights and see how fights really take place. You know, and and actually I feel, um, I don't know, connected to the uh, 10th planet system in a way that I hadn't before. Because, you know, me, I came from, you know, Lloyd Irvin, you know, I was, you know, 10th planet thing was just kind of this like fringe movement. But out of all the different types of associations that that embraced uh, this idea the most, the 10th planet guys seem to be the most open. And that's Mm. what the expectation is because they're traditionally untraditional, so to speak. And anyway, I would expect more of that in our community. Yeah. So, yeah. We were talking a little bit before we started recording about your podcast appearances, of which there are many, many. (laughs) And I'll just say it, right? Like a lot of them seem to, I don't know if this is their intention when they want ask you to come on, right? But it does seem a lot, you were challenged quite a bit in a lot of these. And, you were saying today that, you know, you don't necessarily get angry, but you're passionate about things, right? And that may yeah. come across people as anger or whatever. But even as I listen sometimes, I'm like, Greg's going to be losing his mind having this conversation, <laughs> right? So I'm just curious, like, how has, how do you deal with that today, right? I mean, right. that constant challenging of what you believe to be successful and has shown to be successful in your students, people embracing it, and there's their success on the mats and the competition scenes, how do you deal with that, man? Like the constant pushback into what you're saying. Well, a right? couple of different things. So the first is I don't accept these as any real challenges. Nobody's actually really challenged me. You're just telling me how you feel. Okay, great. We all have feelings. C- congratulations, mm. right? But what are you really trying to tell me? What's really wrong? What What do you disagree with what I'm actually saying? Everyone's just talking about how it makes them feel. And so that's frustrating because I'm saying, hey, let's let's engage at a, at a deeper level, right? What do you really want to know? What really don't, don't you understand? You know, why does it really sound confusing? And nobody's operating at that level. No one's even trying to gain a base understanding of what I may or may not be saying. Not even a little bit. And so that makes it very frustrating. Yeah. And that's mm. kind of where my asshole attitude comes out because I'm like, dude, you invited me on this motherfucker. Like, dude, didn't you prepare? It's like you didn't do your homework. Come on, right. you just try a little bit. It's just they're lazy. And that is frustrating. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, really, the way that I deal with it is to be as open as I possibly can. I invite everyone to my gym. I take Noah with me pretty much anywhere I go. Challenge what I'm saying to you. Look at what I'm producing. Come see my students. We are in the open. There's nothing hidden. Like, dude, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I say I'm doing. So that's my defense. Yeah. Just work. Just work, work, work. Be open. Be honest. Give the information. And that's it. Man. But yeah, it is frustrating though, too. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And I, it's funny because, and we, uh, we've been doing it for what, almost a year? <laughs> No? Just about a year. Just about a year. And we had a student, and I think he, he told you and he told me separately um, that he had made more progress in like, I don't even know, the six weeks or so that we had been doing it than the, than the six months that he had been training in a more traditional sense beforehand, right, right. right? And like, as soon as he told me that, I was like, oh, we made the right move here, mm. right? Like, I was so it was so cool to hear that, like after, this was someone in our fundamentals class, right? Like just, like, yeah, man, this is the way I want to do it from now on. Yeah. Which is... Like that, the proof is in the pudding there, For right? Sure. Like you don't have to, there's no other argument. Like yeah. your students are telling you, I feel better now than I did in the six months prior. Mm. What else do you need to know? Well, you know, what's interesting is let's think about what's actually happening. So they like it because they're actually training for the first time. Mm-hmm. Think about it. And in our class, you want to engage with your sport. You want to touch people, play. That's what we do. We, we, we immobilize people, we strangle, we break them. You know the deal. We do jujitsu. And if 10 minutes of that is running around, okay, that's not jujitsu. <laughs> 20 minutes is explanation. Eh, it's not really jujitsu. 10 more minutes is maybe drilling, and then you only do 15 minutes jiu-jitsu a night? That's <laughs> fucking crazy. But if you just take a bunch of new guys, give them some general parameters, have them resist each other for an hour and do actual jiu-jitsu, just doing that alone, your students are going to improve because they're actually yeah. training. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing. It's our definition of training is not correct, or traditional one anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? The whole idea of training is to uh, build specific skills in the person to transfer to the imp- performance environment. So if we're not making changes in the individual to get them better at what we're doing, then we're not training. Yeah. We're just memorizing a bunch of things that already happened in our community, you know, in the historical record. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So um, I, going back to the coaches that are struggling and trying to make traction in someone else's academy, I think what a lot run up to, though, is not everybody wants to be a business owner, yeah. right? Not everyone wants to own a gym. They want to coach. They like coaching. 
um, were you set out to own a gym no. or did you, you got into it out of necessity? It's kind of a mixture of different things, man. So, uh, I mean, the first thing is I always wanted to be involved in jiu-jitsu and I would like to make a living doing it because I knew this was my passion. I knew this is what I loved. So at first I was just going to try to operate within other people's gyms, but having a strong personality, being opinionated, you know, I had no respect for authority, shit like that. Uh, it didn't, it didn't go very well for me. Uh, no matter what I would do, even if my intentions were pure and I was really trying to help the students, if the instructor didn't like the way I was, the way I looked, the way I spoke, I was getting chastised for bullshit. I'm like, you hired me because you want me to make your students better. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do. So it just didn't work out. Uh, and so I was sort of forced into the role of owning my own gym. Um, and even then I promised that I, I myself, I'm going to be a coach. I'm going to live as small as I can. So I don't have to focus heavily on the sales and marketing side, be visible, have a decent business, do some SEO. But other than that, be a fucking coach, man. Let the people come and go as they please. So anyway, I didn't really want to be because I really wanted to focus on the coaching thing. I was sort of forced into like, you know, opening my own gym because I still wanted to keep doing it. Yeah. And it, it's a hard line, man. Like if you come to my gym, dude, <laughs> it isn't, it doesn't feel like a friendly place. You know, <laughs> like there's no front desk. There's no waiting area. It's just mats, bathrooms, locker rooms, <gasps> training equipment, you know, and that's how I like it. I want people to know that this is what this is. This is what we came here to do. Let's let's all let's all engage. Yeah. With well, that probably does a good job at qualifying <clears throat> the type of uh, customers or members you end up having, right? Yeah, they walk truly. in and they see that's the environment. I mean, there's no no question about it. Like yeah. they know. What yeah, I want to I want to cut all the fat off so you can see what's, what's in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Like I I, I when people come by and be like, oh, I, when I smelled the place, I knew that the, you guys train here. You know what I mean? Uh, man, when I saw the mats, man, they're they're worn. Uh, this is the place to be. Mm. And I, man, I take that with pride because that's what we are here to do. Get better at this grappling sport. No, no other reason. Everything else is a byproduct. Friends, byproduct. Getting in shape, byproduct. Confidence, byproduct. It's all about jujitsu though. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, do you feel as a competitor, like, oh boy, here comes one of the Souders guys. Like, do you feel target at all? Uh, or you not, don't, I mean, you may not give a shit, but I'm just curious. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, maybe a little bit, like uh, just in terms of I'm like, Greg's product in a way like I'm yeah. representing his program I've only ever trained this way so yeah there's like some additional pressure on that but it doesn't really impact my psychology when it comes to competing because you know like I'm invested mm -hmm. in it too like this is something I'm pursuing as a career and I'm not just for myself but for the gym you know I'm really invested in seeing standard do well I think that we could easily be one of the landmarks in the jiu-jitsu community the same way that all the gyms in Texas and SoCal are right now yeah and, you know, I just think that we need some time to develop that, and I'm just happy to be contributing to that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Just curious. For sure. Yeah. It's funny, you know, watching him, I know that, I know he says that, but he does feel it because he knows what he's representing. It's a bigger thing because we're trying to show people stuff. Right. But he, uh, he handles the pressure extremely well. Um, a lot of people can't, and that's really the difference between a good competitor and, and not. And I always tell him, like, I always tell him, I don't give a, I don't care where you think you come from. I don't care that you come from me. The only thing that you remembered by the end of the day is your effort. You go out there and you give whatever you've got, no matter where you come from, no matter where you learned it. It's all about your actions. So take them. You know what I mean? Because I don't want him to get caught up in the bullshit in his head because it does happen. It yeah. does happen. And yeah. he does a good job at not letting it. I mean, mm. it'll creep in, but yeah. we, we got him, you know? Yeah. And the good thing is, you know, like even if it's separate from, you know, like all the things surrounding Greg, just because of how he's describing our gym, it's like there's not really anything in the gym except for anything that has to do with fighting itself. It's like it's the mats. You know, there's a front door, <laughs> there's fans, so you don't <laughs> die. That's about it. Yeah, barely. But, yeah, so barely I think. Barely not die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> barely not die. And, uh, you know, from the jump, being in that environment, I think uh, it makes it a lot easier for me to be, you know, to be, I guess, ignorant of all the bullshit that's surrounding that. You know, whether it's specific to us or just in the jiu-jitsu community with, like, you know, like all the sales and marketing stuff and, you know, instructionals and this is my technique or this guy's technique. It's mm -hmm. just like. I never really ever got the opportunity to be invested in any of that bullshit yeah. because from the jump, I was like, oh, okay, this is bullshit. <laughs> it's super interesting to hear him say that because one of the things that Pat and I were talking, and I'm an old fart, right? I, and I started in a, in a traditional, you know, teaching environment in the gi, right? Like that's how I learned. And, you know, even coming here before we made this move, right? And so I'm very much of like this, just be quiet and go do your thing and Absolutely. like shit talking. And then there's a bunch of guys who are much younger than me in at the school who were like very vested in like the jujitsu community drama like yeah. so and so doesn't like so and so yeah, it's so Gordon saying about Nikki Rod yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> Nikki yeah. Rod and Gordon staring at each other and yeah. I'm like I just don't give a f 
flying fuck about any of that shit. And I always would joke with him, like, I, this makes me feel so damn old. Yeah. But I wonder, like, does that shit creep into you guys at oh, all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we bullshit and we talk shit. We talk about the community. It's our community, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's just entertainment for us uh, yeah. in the background of our training. Yeah. Yeah. And really, we have a we have a great uh, athlete in DeAndre. So, you know, he's the type of guy, he doesn't like people to talk about him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't, he's not in it for anything else other than the love. And this is one reason why I love him so much. And he puts a check on that shit. Like he'll get upset with the guys. Like, what are we really doing? We don't talk, we show. And so he's a, he's like the captain of the team. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't try to be. It's just his presence is strong and it's a, it's an honest, genuine, solid presence. And I think uh, he acts as a nice cultural control for some of the younger guys because they're looking up to him. He's the guy out there doing it. Yeah. And he's putting in work that, fuck, it'll break most people. And so, again, yeah, we bullshit, we talk, we fuck around, but at the end of the day, we know why we're doing this. We're doing it for the love. We're doing it because we want to show what we're capable of. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, but we're, we're people. We fuck yeah. around. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 We got to like, have some fun. I mean, yeah, don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's fun to engage with all this stuff that's surrounding the jiu-jitsu community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all the drama that's going on. But... In terms of what we actually have investment in, it's nothing but the thing itself. Yeah. You know? I mean, because to tell you the truth, I actually feel bad for those guys. I feel I feel bad for yeah. the team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, do you have a bunch of talented guys in a room fucking jerking each other off and playing jokes? Like, where's the leader? Where's the guy tying it all together to take all that talent and put it somewhere? And I'm not saying they're not having success. Don't get me wrong. There, there are going to be outliers everywhere you go. And there's a, a bunch of tough guys in that room. But, man, someone could tie that thing together right. and they could be a real powerhouse, mm. man. Yeah. You know, but they're just fucking around too much. And yeah. I, I mean... You know, I'm not hating on them. I'm just, damn, the guys, come on. You got a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of like, um, I don't, yeah, I'll say this and I'm a nobody, but like there's a lot of like image management that strikes me, right? Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Like, no disrespect to Craig, but I just can't, I can't even deal with it half the time. I'm like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, and again, some guys do, right? I just like, that's just not my thing. It just feels like a lot of image management for sure so than like getting out in the mats and yeah, doing shit yeah. right it's like we get it you're funny cool man yeah, awesome right. like do something else like, I would have beers with him don't get me wrong oh, right of course yeah. Like, yeah, dude, yeah. he looks hilarious yeah. you know yeah. what I mean he looks like a great time but I get and that's kind of the trap I think people fall into when they do become a character you know what I mean they, they fall into the trap of their character and that's yeah. how they have to act and all it's the making time making you now. money yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely, absolutely. everything yeah. is a lot tied of money. to it it's funny, I actually joked of Jacob Couch about this because he's such a nice guy. I was like, you're fucked now. Now you always have to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now like, your paycheck relies yeah, on Yeah, that's it. right. Yeah. So for me, that's why I try to switch it up. Make him hate me, make him love me, <laughs> and do whatever I want because like, I don't want anything to, to control the way I act. I can't you know, fuck what you think of me. I'm, they're, 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 I'm in it for the work. But anyway, so when guys get caught in that culture, I think it can be really detrimental to both themselves and their students and the culture at their gym. So yeah, yeah. yeah try to try to be wary of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, training methodologies aside, all that, something I appreciate, you know, just watching you guys from the outside level and, you know, your video content and what else is out there is the way you coach your guys and the way you speak to them. Yeah. Well, I love my guys. I, I, it's an interesting thing, man. I truly, this is going to sound idealistic and grandiose. It really is. But the thing is, I have to go to the sacred bond. I'm literally asking mm -hmm. them to come into my room and beat the shit out of themselves to try to go win this medal. And they're not going to get anything for it but glory. And they're going to just ragdoll themselves to try to achieve this end so we all can benefit from being around each other. That's asking a lot. And because you'll get an athlete that will believe in everything you say. And they will go down that, that road that you tell them to go down. And the consequences will be shared between both of you. So I try to make sure that there's always somebody there to support you. If you fall, if you falter, if shit goes bad, because it will. And because I'm actually causing it. Like I'm creating something. You're buying in. We're stuck together now. Mm -hmm. And so we got to, some of those relationships can become very unhealthy in our community. And I like to be as supportive and as loving to my students as I can. Because I am, man. I'm, I'm with my guys, dude. Whatever they need, man. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway. And that sounds crazy, but I think that's important. I think yeah, 100% it shows. Um, actually, I saved a video clip. It was from the one ADCC, I think it was trials. You were talking to Sid yeah. after yeah. his match, oh, yeah. and he was yeah. like yeah. down on himself, what he could have done, and like he gave him the yeah. the talk about no could have, like he's done the work that you haven't done yet, and you know, yada, yada. I yeah. thought that was yep. a really well, dude, powerful like after match speech to have with a young athlete. Sid is interesting. Sid's got mega heart. Like he's a, he's a loving guy. He's affectionate. You know what I mean? Uh, but he's as tough as nails. He mm -hmm. wants to bang. Like, yep. let's go, let's fight everybody. <laughs> and that's how he is all the time. And he just needs some support because like I said, he's not really, he's not negative. He's very positive. He believes in himself. He's got tons of confidence. And uh, I just want to let him know that that's all good and everything, but we still got, got work. work. It's still yeah. effort. It's still <laughs> yeah. work. And so man, Sid, I think, uh, uh, has a has a bright future if he mm -hmm. can if he can lock in which he does he's a great student um, but yeah he's got a lot of great qualities and I just want to make him know that yeah it's effort baby yeah, you got to yeah. get it done it's yeah. not should have would have could have got to get it done yeah no yeah. that was really good I know a bunch of our guys like picked up on that and mm. sent it to me after it was a 
I think a really powerful yeah. Yeah. video clip to have out there. And What's I think that kind of ties back to like the whole question about like, do we feel pressure or me personally or any of his athletes? It's like, with all that pressure, we also have the comfort of knowing that our Greg is lit or our coach Greg is literally thinking about us twenty four seven, like <laughs> what he's going to do for practice that day, how it's how that practice is going to affect the practice the next day, what competitions we're doing, how we're going to approach practice design for those competitions. Like, are you okay mentally? Are you okay physically? Is everything all right at home? Like, you the level of investment that he has in us is so apparent that it doesn't feel off or strange to have the same level of investment in him and yeah. what he's doing for anyone that actually pays attention like it's very apparent from the outside at least mm. yeah, yeah, for me you, it is. like yeah. you can tell how tight-knit you guys are your competition yeah. squad you're you're all in together on the same goal like yeah yeah of course i really appreciate you guys noticing because they're those are that's a subtlety that people don't talk about a lot of you people know? call themselves a team talk about their team yeah, yeah. like you guys are a team right. well i have a weakness as a coach like i'm there for the jiu-jitsu and i i just i kind of have this um the predisposition to always assume everyone else is too. And so my guys have to check me because I'm not very good at socializing. And, and so I try to bring the love around the thing. Like, let's work hard. Let's be effortless. Let's support each other while doing it and try to talk to each other as much as we need to. Uh, and so anyway, I have to be uh, checked on that all the time because like, cause I'm not, thinking, let's go out to dinner guys. Let's, uh, I, I try, but I'm not that good at it. Yeah. So I, I try to do it in another way. I try to do it in where I love, like you'll, oh, you can always know where to find me. Mm. At my fucking gym. <laughs> so if you need me, that's where I'll be. Yeah. You know, and you I might mean? be washing your car outside at yeah. 5.30 a.m. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. the sun's not out. Yeah. yeah, don't tell me because, man, some creeper's going to, oh, that's where you are, coach. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had a student that I was like, I felt a little stalkerish. It was a yeah. Sunday morning. He shows us 6.30 and is like, were you following me? Yeah, yeah. 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 Weird. Uh, There's no class today. It's Sunday, <laughs> man. <laughs> I was going to ask you what the day, a day in the life of Greg Souders is. <laughs> like, oh, really? Yeah, like what was, what's like... I guess what I really want to know is what happens outside the gym? Like, what, what else are you into? Uh, so that's like, what what's fucked up. On? There really isn't uh, a Greg outside the gym. It's kind of it's kind of stressful for me, actually, honestly. Because you think about it, being an aging coach, aging athlete, like, what do you have outside of this? When it all falls apart, where who are you? And the, I, I've given complete investment to this for the last 20 years. So even my personal relationships are all centered around jujitsu. Like, the women I date, who I'm with, it's, you, you gotta, jujitsu is my first love, and I let them all know, this is it. You, you come second. I'm, I'm dead serious when I say that. So anyways, it's tough, man. So I, I mean, I live in, and breathe and die and for this shit. I just, I love it. That's what I want to dedicate my life to, right? I, I think there's this idea of mastery that we kind of uh, don't attach to anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's always like what I have, you know, what my title is, but I want to master my subject. Yeah. So, you know, in the morning I wake up, make my coffee. I do always minimum 20 minutes. I pick up a book. So I read a lot. So, you know, even if I'm paying attention or not, 20 minutes staring at the page, I have sleep problems. So I try to go for an early morning walk. Uh, helps me helps me sleep at night, and then uh, if I have stuff around the house, I'll do that, or I go to the gym. I check my messages all that because my message block is fucking blown up. <laughs> so I, sure. I try to do that. I always do, I keep myself in good physical shape, so I do my physical conditioning. I watch Noah teach noon a lot of the time to see how he's doing. Um, answer calls, take calls, talk to my other coaches, and then basically from four o'clock till ten o'clock, I'm at the gym teaching classes, answering questions, running classes. My day's the same every day. Like if you remember that movie from the '80s, Groundhog Day, that's me. <laughs> yeah. uh, really, truly. Sometimes I forget what fucking month it is, what day it is. Every day's the same. So, but I like it like that. What are you reading? Oh, right now. So I'm actually. <laughs> so I just I got a book on color theory. <laughs> so I have this like weird interest. Um, uh, this is so dumb. I can't even say <laughs> We got him. We got uh, him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you guys are about to find out how autistic Greg <laughs> really is. <laughs> I'm trying. God, I don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah, I've been looking at like interior design, man. Like I, I'm interested in how people put shapes, textures, and colors together. I'm, I'm, it interests me all of a sudden for some reason. So a buddy of mine uh, brought me a book. It's on color theory. And he said when he was reading it, he thought of me. And it was just random. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, give me that shit. Yeah. And so that's what I'm currently reading. Uh, before that, uh, I was fascinated um, with this book called uh, How Context changes everything how um uh constraints cause coherence it's a it's written in 20, 2023 by alicia Guerrero. it's a pretty deep philosophical book on uh context and why it matters uh is fascinated and then before that france bosch so mostly ecological shit mostly direct perception shit embodied cognition but occasionally i fuck around with other things mm. like uh richard Feynman's six easy pieces i read just recently and um yeah the color theory book is what i'm on now oh a book on woodworking too i there you go. Uh, a friend of mine sent me that. So anyway, just all over the place. But like I said, I, most of it's all centered around jujitsu. Yeah. Um, this is a, a weird tangent, but I, I have a suggestion, a book suggestion for Please. you yeah. called The Design of Everyday Things. Okay. And I've, I run a team of designers for another company in my day job. And it's one of the things that I um, 
asked them to read. I was going to say I gave them homework, but they probably would resent me saying yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's very interesting just about how design influences use. Okay. Right. Yeah, so, like, the design of, like, why the cell phone is shaped the way it affordances, is. Affordances, gentlemen. Yeah. Affordances. <laughs> or why the teapot is shaped the way it is, right? So, you may just find it interesting. So, yeah. Right. No, that isn't because that's actually what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> so, we are using a, a, an understanding of how humans interact with objects to design mm-hmm. objects that humans interact with. So, we're, we're doing that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, that's uh, sort of in line with direct perception. That's the idea. So, if I have a hand that can grasp, things look graspable. So, if you want to invite me to grasp a thing, build something that looks graspable and I'll yes. more likely to grasp it. Mm. You know, sittable, whatever, standable, whatever, whatever you want to get me to uh, go towards, make it inviting. Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll uh, DM you the, the link. Those Please do. Yeah. Fascinating. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fascinating. I, I, I literally will read anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, one time I was having like some. I had an interest in like uh, the ridiculousness of Christian apology and I re- read a bunch of Christian apologist books and it was brutal to get through, but I did it. You know what I mean? So I'll read anything, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It occurred to, uh, the reason why I asked that was it occurred to me as you were talking about like studying white papers and just going from your, again, more traditional um, teaching methodology to like, how am I going to do this going forward? And the amount of work that it takes, like you, you gave me a couple books around Christmas time and like, it's a lot to take in. Right. And I'm like reading the, um, the CLA book, right? And I'm like, man, this is dense. Yeah, yeah. Right? But that I takes like, a few reads. Takes a few reads, but I'm like <laughs> highlighting stuff over and over again. But I picked up on you saying like you obviously have delved pretty deeply into educating yourself, um, not just like the thought process, but even the terminology, right? right? And being able to communicate that to people. And I thought it was pretty interesting that you said, like, you know what? I don't really try to talk this way to my students. Yeah. Right? I mean, you obviously have a different level of exposure there, but like. I was because I had wondered about that. Like, how much do I need to explain why I'm doing this the way I am to my students? Yeah, yeah, you know. And it's oh, I'm always kind of like uh, I don't know whether you feel this way, but I'm always kind of um, like trying to find the right balance for sure, especially if they've come from another gym. Right? You know, I, I think I, I could, two things I can think about here when you say that. So one is a uh, one of my favorite coaches, of course, stereotypical as it sounds, is John Wooden. And he said a good ho- a good coach hides his intentions within the practice. Mm. You don't have to explain your practice; mm. it should just work. And so I try to think about that. Okay, well, put my, put my design in the practice. The practice should be the thing that causes the change. It's the catalyst, right? Now, but occasionally you have to do something else. You have to defeat an expectation, raise a standard, give a why. And these things can be psychologically reinforcing to some students. Some students will do the practice, but their constant internal focus of why, why, why mm-hmm. might be something that's distracting them from really getting the most out of it. So you might have to go about saying, hey guys, this is why I'm doing it. So there's no reason not to do it. There, there are good reasons too, but we don't want to be every, we don't want every practice be a fucking lecture. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But they came here to do jujitsu. Most guys, they're so tired from work and then they know they're to go home to, you know, Maybe something they don't want to go home to. <laughs> well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so they got to They don't want to hear, listen to me. They want to grab their buddy and shake them, you know, so they're tired. So let them do it. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't always have to be a fucking lecture. Yeah. 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 yeah I think it, it's probably like case by case in terms of, you know, how much curiosity the student is showing about the practice design right. and the framework versus like, I just want to come and t- take the class and then leave. Yeah. You know, like there, there are some people that are just at, like the same level of skill where they're engaged in all the academia and they're yeah. going through all the literature and they've read all the white papers. Yeah. And sometimes they'll even be worse than somebody who's like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to dump him on his head. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, so I think it's a case by, like, I remember, uh, I was probably a lot more engaged when I first started just because once I realized the differences in terms of like the average school's practice design and how they approached it versus Greg, I was like, Oh, like, well, what exactly is this? So I remember the first book I asked Greg about was a uh, make it stick. Um, I forget who was by, but I remember like I would wake up before school and, uh, I would go to homeroom and I would spend the entire time trying to read the book and I would like read the same paragraph like five mm-hmm. times. And then by the time I got to my first class, my brain was completely fried yeah. and then I'd go through all of school, I'd get home and then I'd try to continue re- reading the book and then I'd go to class. And so, you know, exhibiting that level of interest is like, that's just like a personal choice. I don't yeah. think it has much to do with the actual development in the athlete, you know? Yeah. Did you, um, how did that come about though? Was it just like, hey, what the hell's Greg doing? And I'm going to try to understand it. Yeah, well, it was on, It was more from seeing other people exhibiting curiosity. Uh, and then I was like, what the fuck is so special about like what's going uh, on? Because I, yeah. I was like, this is how a class is supposed to be run. And right. then I was like, oh, that's no, nobody else is doing this. <laughs> yeah, and it's become more and more evident to me. Uh, like it's different just hearing about other gyms and ha- like seeing online and like anecdotally how other schools run their practice. Versus now, you know, I've been in the community for a little bit longer and I've been training for a little bit longer and I've gone all over the place with Greg and seminars and see how other gyms run their class. And I've trained at a couple of other gyms. 
And uh, unfortunately, it's only made me more and more of an extremist in terms of. <laughs> I'm I think sure. Most of these guys are playing with sticks and stones. <laughs> That's we awesome. Are, we started a fire a long time ago. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the line from? Uh, oh, is it from Training Day? He's like, this shit ain't checkers. This is chess. Yeah, 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 hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah. No, I just think we we owe it to our students to do more to really like give them the experience they're looking for. Really give them that experiential knowledge we want them to have. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's so confusing because if, if you ask someone, like even an IP guy, they're like, oh, it's the experience that taught me. But then you're <laughs> like, well, when you give your why don't you give your students experience? No, they have to know what's right first. <laughs> That's strange. <laughs> it's like the irony doesn't smack him in yeah, the face. Yeah. It's so weird. Let me tell you about the thing for 30 minutes before you do the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's nothing worse than that. Yeah, yeah. I did want to ask you, uh, one of the things that I have noticed in class and teaching, right, is that we'll give them, you know, a very specific thing to do. And some guys will break off. And then you'll hear, like, the more experienced guy telling the inexperienced guy, you got to do it this way, right? For sure. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Or, you know, uh, somebody else chimes in, whatever it may be. I think we talked about this a little bit when we sat down with you mm-hmm. and DeAndre, but I'm curious, Greg, like, how do you handle that? Like, if I, you know, someone came in and they're used to a more, you know, an IP based yeah. training methodology and they're like, hey, Pat, you actually got to do this. Like, you made the joke about, like, you got to squeeze your leg together earlier, right? right. But, yeah, like, yeah. no, honestly, there's a few ways to think about it. So, one, it does irritate me because you're what you're when you're doing that, you're telling me something about the nature of reality. You're saying that this dude needs for me to tell them what I know so they can know what they know. Like, you're literally saying something, right? It's more than just, you showing them the move. You're literally claiming how training should go. So in that sense, it irritates me a little bit because you're in our environment. Okay, fine, whatever. But at the same time, I want people to interact. So learning is non-linear. We don't know the input-output ratio. So if we have two humans interacting with each other, having discussion, this is a healthy thing. So I don't want to stop that. Um, but it, it does irritate me because only the way it's approached, right? Uh, and I know that it will work itself out. But then you have some people in your gym that refuse to stop. Even if they've been exposed to the information, even if they've done all the things, they think they know it all. That's just a personality problem. Um, but either way, I used to bitch about it. I used to stop. I don't stop them anymore. Just fucking let them go. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And the good thing is a lot of the students start to ignore those guys because they start to understand that this is not really working. So I'm going to stop listening to you. And it becomes irritating to them because they just want to train. They yeah. don't want to hear the guy like, well, you know, your angle of your hip at the fucking knee wasn't where it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. It kind of self-regulates itself, right? Oh, uh, for sure. Kind of like when the asshole comes in the gym, right? And everybody just kind of weeds his ass out. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Uh, we, we have one, uh, <laughs> you know, like, but it, it's weird because people, people avoid him and, mm-hmm. and nobody knows why. <laughs> like you just know, you know, and yeah, so it, it works out. Like yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. So practice planning. Yep. These days, how much time a week are you spending on like putting together your? Honestly, not class? so much. I've been doing this for quite a while. I have a nice flow to what's happening, and really because the only actually the most thought I had to put into it is actually the advanced guys. So my the thing is is my general the, my general pro- program design for the beginners is good. It it, it solves the two day a week problem. It. It, you know, it's great for four day a weekers, but when Do you I, have them on just like, is it like a rotating kind of cycle? Uh, so basically we just flip flop. We go from guarded situation as the main focus of the week to pinning situation as the main focus interleaved with the other type. So if it's a guard focus week after that first 30 minutes, we do like uh, pin games at the end mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then the other way around. So you flip flop that weekly. Yeah, yeah. Weekly. Yep. Um, but we try to weave themes in. Like, and what I see weave theme is like, let's say we're just doing a foundational thing, make and maintain connection to hold your partner down. No matter what scope we're looking at that from, arm lock breaking position, mount, guard passing, that's the central function. So they're seeing that there's a functional component to these alignments that seem different, right? They are different in their state, but the condition we're trying to impose upon our opponents is the same. So I try to weave that through the practices. Yes. Um, and we just, we just alternate, you know, uh, guard, guard pin, guard pin, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And we just go, you know, and sometimes I do, I want to do something different. I get bored. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, yeah. we're going to go straight to heel hooking today. And we're going to spend a whole week on how to twist and break legs. Um, and brand new people doing it, you know, and actually that's a, a lot of people are scared of that, but that's the safety mechanism, by the way, exposing new students to that in a constrained way first protects the injury, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I don't, I don't spend much time with the foundations any much anymore. I'm pretty decent at that. It's the advanced guys. I, I obsess. Like trying to help DeAndre make a change, <laughs> I have to I have to watch him obsessively because I don't know if I'm seeing all the right things. And I'm he's giving so much effort. I'm so af- not, I guess afraid of him failing or having a bad performance. Not for me, but for him. Uh, and so I try to watch him like a hawk. Like to God, make sure I can see the bad thing before it emerges when we're out there in, in the tournament. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I think about him yeah. constantly. It's like proofreading Einstein. It's like, what, <laughs> no, like, what am I going to tell him? <laughs> like, Dude, yeah, yeah. it's so hard. So in the past, before you got to kind of the level of you know understanding where you are now, were you the type that was writing out every yeah. single Absolutely. detail Absolutely. My, my for phone practice? is ridiculous filled with notes. I would just write thoughts I had down. Like I, I would just keep something near me, like, oh shit, and I have to write it down. <laughs> uh, I like to make notes as like a, um, a, or, uh, exercise in organization. Mm -hmm. It helps me sort of just solidify a mm -hmm. topic. Uh, and then I can like, oh, I wrote that on my phone earlier. Let me babble it to Noah and see if I can regurgitate it without looking at it. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can convey this idea I just wrote down. So it's just an exercise. Uh, it's, a, it's practice. Yeah. We've been doing know? the same. Yeah. We've been keeping index cards in a binder. So that way it's at the gym, the other coaches. Mm. Or flip through and yeah, 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 see what my thoughts are, see what I'm working on. Yeah. I like that. I haven't done That's a good cool. job of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you you got to keep the secrets, to, bro. Don't let them know. When yeah, Bo Nickel was on Rogan, okay, he was talking about how Coach Cal has just like binders and binders of ten years of yeah. practice plans, right? And they can just look through and be like, oh, ten years ago, his here's success what he was is not an accident. <laughs> um, you know. I, I get very jealous of that. I would love to coach at that level with that committed level of an athlete because I think that, so the thing about note-taking for us is I think we are dealing with more variables than he is, right? That he's dealing with, you know, people that went through the crucible of, you know, athletic performance as it relates to, to wrestling. And so he's getting the cream of the crop. They selected these guys to be in this room. So those notes are very valuable because mm -hmm. there's actually a lot of consistency uh, in that type of environment where we, we are dealing with a guy who shows up once a month. Yeah, that's a good point. So, we take a note on that guy who fucking knows what's going to change him. Right? You know what I mean? And so it's a little harder for us. So I think we though dealing with pedestrians should be less strict with ourselves as coaches because they don't require that level of rigor because they're not giving it to us. Right. Mm. But the guy that comes into your room and is staring at you as you're designing practice, who asks a ton of questions there seven days a week, he's the guy you take notes on because he's going to be the proof in your point. That's interesting. How do you handle it when you have, so you're teaching, you said you teach noon classes, mm -hmm. right? So how yeah. do you handle your, uh, well, I'm still a noob right now, so yeah. I still got to write all my stuff out. Yeah. yeah so but, are you, um, like, pulling from what Greg has done previously? Like, how do you handle that? No, I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to end up making similar games as to how yeah. he makes them. But I, I try to, as of recently, I've tried to have a more specific framework as to, you know, like, have follow a general idea over a span of a few weeks. It's nothing strict. Like, I don't have a curriculum written mm -hmm. out or anything mm -hmm. like that. But it's uh, more so, like it's really based on what I see in the room. So the plan that I'll have on Monday might be completely different by the time we hit Friday, because yes. I'm like, Oh, you're not responding to this game that I thought that you would, or, Oh, this behavior emerged way quicker than I yeah. thought it would. We can scale that out. Um, so things like that. But as of right now, I still feel kind of like I'm shooting from the hip and like waiting in the water and figuring yeah. out where I'm going. But yeah. you know, like, uh, week by week, like I start to feel more and more competent in terms of how I engage with the class and right. you know, like how much I'm actually offering them. And so, yeah, still, uh, still working it out as of right now. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a topic I wanted to bring up, actually. Um, everyone's always looking for the grab bag of games, right? Yeah, yeah. right? The library of games. Greg, put out a thing on games. I need your games. Yeah. yeah, it's brutal because I'm not trying to give you that. And I tell everybody, that's not what I'm doing, guys. Like, everyone's accusing me of trying to set up this long sale. <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. Like, I, what are you talking about? I don't want to give you my method. First of all, there are, there are trade secrets that I have that I'm not going to share. But at the same time, I could sell them. They're very good. <laughs> but I'm not going to because yeah. mine. Right? Should you know? I cut the camera? We'll <laughs> no, but at the same time, I want to I wanna help you build a framework that I use to get to those trade secrets. Yeah. Because I want you to have your own too. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, no. I, I want to think there's a better way to do it. And we can all engage. And we don't need to tell each other anything. We can just fucking do it this way. But there is no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. That is so frustrating. Yeah. People want to replace techniques with games. Guys, it's not going to fucking happen, man. Because if we do that, we're just doing live techniques, which yeah. is better than static mm. techniques. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we don't use this method to try to make something in history reemerge. Uh, I don't know. I think the researcher was Newell. He said, uh, coach's responsibility is to teach what is known, but leave room uh, for what is unknown or what hasn't emerged yet. Yeah. And I think by just creating highly specific practices based on other people's designs, because you want what they have is missing the, missing the point. Mm. That's something that it took me some time to figure that out. I was trying to make things emerge. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is because that's what we, that, think about how interesting that is. I did that too, because that's how we learned. We were shown position, outcome, but we were not taught the conditions that make that happen. So we only think, because we don't know how to talk about that transitional information. We only know how to talk about state here, state here. I want that outcome. So we think like that because that's how we were taught to look at jujitsu. Um, and so I just decided to constrain myself. Like, all right, well, I'm not going to talk about those things anymore. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out. How, how else can I talk about it? What referring to how I learned it? Mm -hmm. So no, it's an honest mistake because mm -hmm. that's how you were taught to look. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I found one of the more helpful things, aside from the games, right? Like, uh, I don't know how long ago it was you had posted um, some variants. critiques of oh, oh, the yeah, teaching, yeah. right? Yeah. And that night, I felt like I taught my best class ever because I was like driving home and I, I just had YouTube playing like, through the Bluetooth on the car, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Just so I could hear it at least. So I couldn't even see what they were actually doing, but I could hear your critiques, right? And like the specificity of like, uh, I don't remember the exact example, but somebody had said something, you were like, you need to be more specific. Tell them exactly what you're expecting them to do. Mm. And I was like, oh shit, I'm going to like lean into that. And I think I taught like some variation of, you know, pinning, back pinning. And afterwards, actually one of the women who's here in this, in this, for the seminar today came over and she was like, that was like really good. That's exactly what I needed. Mm. And I was like, yes. Yeah, yeah, right? that, I did yeah. like that. That just felt like the best class yet. You yeah. Know? It yeah. just felt like, so for me, it's like less even about the games, more mm. about like the specificity of execution of the methodology. Yeah. If that's yeah. the way, you know, well, no, I think that's the, the real thing I'm trying to get at. The word games is to, is to convey or that we're trying to like isolate comp component parts of the big game. Jiu-Jitsu is a game. Yeah. But people get so fucking caught up in that word. It's like people are weird. It's like they want to center everything they focus on around these strange yeah, things. Yeah. Eco class, games, <laughs> task based games. Yeah. Dude, we're doing games night. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah, it's games so night. Silly. Yeah. It's wild to watch, like uh, seeing, you know, it was black and white, like immediately as soon as Greg started to put himself out there and like people started to engage with it. And some, some people hated it and some people loved it. But even the people who loved it, like the jujitsu community, like immediately leached onto it, made it like a sales and marketing thing. It's like right away, I see like, just there's like three games to get better at you know x yeah. y and z thing mm -hmm. and it's just they're showing three different ways to situational spar and it's like no yeah. like what are we doing like <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah i appreciate it but no yeah. that's not what we're doing well and i feel like i was you know i, I was the ignorant educator like i didn't know how to talk about this mm. this is my first time too like so i fucked up a lot i i led people in a lot of different wrong directions because yeah. i wasn't sure the effect my words would have mm. and i just wasn't diligent and disciplined enough when i first came yeah. out so I, i'm working on it i'm taking a lot of feedback a lot of guys are critiquing me like i've had professional speakers contact me like let me help you out bro yeah. and i was oh, like please enough. please yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah. kidding I was, I talked to a psychologist who his whole job is to calm people down basically. Um, so he, he, uh, talks about how to use language to basically reduce stress in a situation. And he was mm. saying that I don't do that. No wonder everyone's uncomfortable as fuck around me. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I am stressed, right, um, right. but no. So anyway, I, it's been great. I, I yeah. feel like I've, I'm doing a, a better job every time yeah. I try and that's my goal. Yeah, if, if you got uh, advice from a jiu-jitsu guy, he probably would have just told you to put it behind a paywall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, like you have, uh, you know, like it, me and Kid Dale are friends, by the way. I like Kid Dale. He's a funny fucking guy. He's good times. We, we go back and forth online and then DMs and shit. Um, you know, but it's like, it's funny. Everyone's all like, oh, Greg's selling something. And Kid Dale was the first guy to go to market with this idea. And that's okay. Because he's always been the live resistance mm, guy. Right, he already right. had a platform to sell on. So he damn right should have done it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But again, it's funny that everyone gets mad at me, but it's like, yo, Kids out here going nuts yeah, and no yeah. one's saying shit. And they just jumped the line. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Out Kids of all, like, hey guys, <laughs> yeah. buy my shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the, out of all the critiques you could or couldn't make about Greg, I never understood like the MLM salesman type shit where it's like, man, if well, it's that because it, of the the Lloyd Irvin, of course, yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone just makes that connection. Right. Like, oh, it must be. Yeah, yeah. But it's like you do like three seconds of critical thought, and it's like, well, okay, if this guy's like main intention and motivation is to be a salesman and get that bag. He fucking sucks at it. <laughs> yeah, real bad, bro. Like, nothing like, for sale. I watch Greg like take five hours of free consultations all morning and then let visitors come from Canada or Portugal and train at our gym for a month free. And they keep asking him to let them pay him. And he's like, no. I remember you saying free. that when we yeah. first talked to you. You were like, yeah, 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 Greg in the business side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is Greg Lloyd Irvin Souders over here. Like, right. was, yeah. Like, what are it's, you talking what's about? It's funny. Guys? Like, if, if Lloyd critiqued, Roy, Lloyd would punch me in the face <laughs> if he saw how I handled my business interactions. Right, right. Like, I'm a bad business student from Lloyd. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, I mean, hey, we watched you, you know, last night and all day today just being super gracious with your time, just answering every single question, getting pulled aside by everybody. You know, it is... This is a long time ago, actually. Roddy Ferguson, uh, one of uh, Lloyd Urban's guys, a uh, judo guy out of Florida. Um, cool, cool cat. Uh, we were all at to lunch one day. And I asked him a question about something he'd been talking about. And he was like, but I can't give you the information for free. You know, I worked my whole, my whole, <laughs> my whole career to learn this, blah, blah. We're just having a lunch conversation. And I just said to him, I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, imagine if we all communicated like that. 
How the hell do we ever get anything across? You think just because you discovered it and did all the work that you have to put it behind a paywall? Come on. And Roddy's reasonable. That's what's interesting. Roddy's like, stop for a minute and listen to what I said. And he gave me the answer. <laughs> and I was like, I immediately like yeah, you for yeah. that, right? right. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, man. Come on. What the fuck is the human component? And I'm not, like, I'm not trying to be squishy and crunchy or anything here. You know what I mean? It's like, I just want to talk to people about shit because we don't know what's going on. What kind of an asshole could I be selling other scientists information they're giving away for free? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Like, That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Uh, when did you decide, like, hey, I'm going to start putting some stuff online and, like, kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say evangelizing, but, like, you yeah. know, when do you, like, letting people know this is what we're doing. So this it's actually Scott it. Savright that really, like, urged me along. <laughs> so he's one of the first guys I'd ever talked to. Uh, we met through an, a guy in my area. I put, a, I had 400 followers on IG because I don't really do social media and I didn't at all then. And, and I just put up a thing, like, hey, uh, if anyone's interested in my training program, if anyone, I don't know who was watching, reach out. Anyway, guy reached out. Uh, reached out, uh, got me connected with Scott. Me and Scott talked. Uh, he's like, I'm gonna come visit. Cool. Scott came, stayed for a week, did all the classes, trained with us. And he's like, Hey, I think you have something to say. You should say it. I was like, Ah, no one's interested in what I have to say. I'm not gonna do it. And he's like, No, dude, really. I think I think you'll do well. Think, Man, you're the guy. Go, go. And he urged me to kind of push me along. Uh, and I was like, Okay, fuck it. I was like, Held my breath and I just did it. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I just kept doing it. Every time I get an opportunity now, I just take it. I don't I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if I really enjoy it, but I don't know. People seem to want to hear it, so I just fucking okay. I'll talk until you guys tell me to shut up. Yeah, yeah. You know, I so, think uh, Greg's care about the community actually having an understanding of what's going on overrides how much he despises doing all <laughs> the the uh, extra media stuff. Yeah, and also too, man, I, I'm actually kind of looking for a challenge as well. I, I want someone to come and tell me how wrong I am. Mm. You know, because I don't want to. I don't want to be super confident. I, I like. I want the doubt. I want to know what's what's going on. So, I don't know. But yeah, my students push me. I go, our camera guy, Rod, is like, we got to put some out. We got to put some yeah, out. Let's, yeah, go. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. So, well, it's funny. Him. Someone made that comment earlier about like, oh, I was just taking, I think someone said this, right? Or I make this shit up. <laughs> like, yeah. where someone's like, I'm waiting for Greg to put out a new video, like yeah. to get my next game, right? Yeah. And someone yeah. said that during the thing. Right. Yeah. It's like, hmm. it's like, they're, like, come on, guys. I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's, yeah, my, yeah. Right. where's the fucking game? Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm feeding for my standard. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm Coach Craig Satter from Standard Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what's your, what's your honest thoughts on the, the group that we had here today. Oh, I, I gave you my thoughts. I really enjoyed the group. Like being in the house with the guys and sitting around bullshitting is yeah. great. And I already know Josh Peacock and uh, Scott well. Um, you know, I've, I've rubbed shoulders with the other cats. Mm -hmm. Me and Ed talked on the phone a bunch. But, uh, man, I truly love Scott and Josh. Man, they've been huge for me in learning this stuff. And so I, f I feel good. I feel like I'm in the room with the compatriots. You know, I like it. Um, and I love the crowd. You guys, man, you got the right guys. It seems like everyone who's invested in something just seems to be better people than everybody else. <laughs> and so interacting is just nice, you know, you know, and nobody treats me like, like, I don't know. I don't like that. Like bowing shit. People yeah, come up, yeah. we just chat, we hang out, we talk. Yeah. Share everyone ideas. here is super friendly and yeah. curious and open-minded. They're engaging with everything. Like, you know, like they'll listen to Greg talk for an hour and a half. They get 10 minutes of a break and then they immediately mm -hmm. go into another hour and a half long lecture. And now right. they're doing it right now for the third time. It's, it's a room like, full of jujitsu yeah. nerds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> awesome to see. Cause it's like, okay, like there are people out there that really do just care about the thing itself. Like what yeah. we were talking as we were earlier. planning this, something we were you know interested in seeing is how this environment was for you. Cause you're so used to, you know, meeting up against resistance and, you know, people that are, you know, contrary to what you're trying to do. And here we gathered up 50 people that are already sold. They're already bought in and they're just trying to, to get the knowledge and better themselves. Mm. But they're asking good questions. Like their, their questions aren't like bowing at my feet questions. They're like, I don't really fully understand this and I want to understand it better. And you're not clear when you say this and what that feels so good. It was interesting uh, to hear the variety of questions you're yeah. like from very like deep scientific to, how do we do this with the gi? Yeah. Right, right. No, and yeah. I enjoy that too. It was awesome. No, there, there's a wide range of people asking questions. You know, some people you can talk deeper into it than others, and that's fine. But everyone's come comes to engage, comes to try to get what they can, and that's what I was thinking about too. Like before I started today, I was like, it's got to be about them asking the questions. It can't be about me. Like I wanted to give the general framework and kind of deliver it as clearly as I could, so they had a kind of understanding of how I'm getting to where I'm getting. But then I wanted I wanted them to get the information they came here for. Mm. I don't want to, to just bombard them with my thoughts. What do you, what yeah, do you need to, point. what do you need to hear me say? Yeah, that's really what we're doing, right? Coach student, right? We, we the, the student is more important than the coach. And so even now in this capacity, capacity where I'm trying to share knowledge, it's still the same, still the same case. They're more important than I am. So I don't know, uh, make it about them. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think it went well. That was a really good session. The hour and a half flew by. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I know. I kept looking at my watch. I was like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I just like to be punctual, man. People, you know, people, I take their time seriously. So mm. yeah. yeah. Well, you get a, you got a class tomorrow morning. You have a class Sunday morning. Yep. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to do some uh, uh, scalability. So we're going to look at how we can take uh, both 
a specific task in a specific situation, we can scale it not only for to increase or decrease difficulty, but to deal with different skilled students. Mm. And so we're going to look at some pragmatic ways to approach that and let people ask questions about that. Very cool. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. It's good. The, the closer we get to actually practicing, the more excited I get. <laughs> like the most nervous I'd ever been is when Sean Mishka asked me to, come, to, to do the uh, movement thing. And I had to speak after Keith Davids and I was expected to talk for 20 minutes. And I'm just sitting there in front of the mic and I don't have any like presentation. I was fucking like shaking. <laughs> this is awful. But if he would have been like, yo, come on here and teach a class, I'd have right. been like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, right. yeah, was, That's what I do every day. Yeah. So I remember I was in the I was in the gym while he was uh, on that call and I remember like peeking over and seeing like a massive sweat stain on his back. I was like, oh somebody's nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I was like, dude. it's sixty degrees in here, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, awesome. It's not, nothing made me more nervous than a bunch of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah, yeah. well if you, you do normally you deal with with like knuckle draggy, like it's a different kind of nerd. community. Yeah, it's like yeah. that's not not intimidating anymore after you deal with it for twenty years. But yeah. you get somebody who's like, um, actually, uh, your practice design is ineffective. Like, oh <laughs> shit! Well, you, got, you have kind of like the inventor of CLA going before me, mm -hmm. and I'm about to say, hey. Let me show you how I use yeah, yeah, your yeah. science. <laughs> right, yeah. right. I felt like shit. He's yeah, like, yeah. dude, you are not using my science. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, how do you think everyone's scheduled to teach after you tomorrow? Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, man. It's like it's like. You know, it's, I think it's good. I think like, like Ed presented super well today. Uh, we agree on a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's like listening to him speak was great. Like it's only, the only weakness I, I think coming from Ed's point of view and not, this is not a critique at all. It's just that the information is so vast. I think that's the reason why I keep it centered around jujitsu, jitsu practice. Because yeah. What yeah. are we using it for? We're not just using it for baseball or golf. Right. right. So we're not talking about it in general capacity. We're, he was I, talking more about coaching. And yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there's a, that's great. Mm -hmm. all that's necessary because a lot of people don't know how to be a coach. Right. Yeah, yeah, people are eating it up. Like, Yeah, yeah. But really it's engaged. like, it's such a hard thing to, you have to be really, really in it to have a productive conversation about it because it's like ecology is such a, a broad thing to have a conversation about. Like it's literally a theory on how humans like engage with the world around them and right. pick up information. <laughs> right. So it's like, you kind of have to put it through a medium of some sort of sport or practice or craft to make it a lot more digestible for most yeah. people. But no, that's not a critique. I like this stuff. No, I'm no, sure. for sure. And it was that was another thing that I thought was really cool was even without going through that medium and like staying over the broad idea of just using it in coaching period, everybody was still like super engaged yeah, he's and asking a, fantastic questions. Like I thought the presentation was awesome. He's a great lecturer for sure. Oh yeah. yeah no, he's great. Sit up there, legs crossed. Yeah. Just, yeah. And yeah, it's super interactive too. Like he's joking back and forth with all the guys yeah. and like he's, he's really diligent with making sure everybody's questions get answered. I joked with Pat. I was like, there's nothing cooler than hearing a guy with a British accent drop the F bomb. Right? <laughs> it just yeah, sounds yeah. awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It just sounds cool. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yep. So you got a, you met a little resistance today on language and terminology, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that pretty common? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I actually, I didn't take his as being real resistance. I think he was truly asking a good question. Um, but of course, I teased the fuck out of him. Of course. So <laughs> I felt like I had the responsibility to go yeah. over and talk to him personally. And he's on. He's on. He just. Yeah, I know him too. He's Okay, yeah. 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 Those questions are good for me. I really like them. Um, I like that level of resistance. He was trying to figure out how much sarcasm to throw back at you. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Because I'm going to go. Like, I, I have, a, I have a, like a tick. I can't even help it. I'll just be sitting there and someone will walk in and I'll want to make fun of him. Yeah, I don't yeah. even know why. I was watching Greg like sitting around as people were walking in and I could see his eyes like darting around. I'm like, I can see the gears. <laughs> Turning, I'm like, I heard don't you say, say that to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To him. I was like, these people are paying to be here. Don't bully him too much. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I, it's how I lighten my anxiety in the mood. Um, yeah, yeah. He'll let everyone know that we're all just here fucking around. Of course, right? yeah. we're all just a bunch of apes trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, no, he was good. I, I enjoyed his questions. Uh, yeah, I don't think he was really. At, he didn't. It's not like he didn't understand invariance. He was just basically trying to ask us how much do we use that type of language, and we're talking to a class. Mm. Yeah. Uh, essentially, none, unless they want to know about it. Right. Like I said, it's got to be hidden in the practice. But uh, now that level of resistance is good. The irritating level is I have an emotional reaction to you. Therefore feelings. Mm. Fuck yeah. that. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, well, we've yeah. talked about this, right? I don't need to belabor the point, but sometimes it's just mind boggling to me. Like, why do you have Greg on if you don't want to listen to what he says? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it sounds like to me. Right. right? Is they just don't want to hear what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Or at, at the very that point, least, like engage with the content that Greg is like talking about. Like, I, I don't understand why you're at a Greg seminar. If the question you're going to ask is why can't we do both? Like, Come on, what are we doing here? Like these are two uh, contradictory. Yeah, don't you know theories. him by now? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I, we were talking about this yesterday when people were like, "Oh, you know, like doing an eco class on this day or like eco week or you know, trying to separate it from the uh, like practice design in general." And it's like I'm just trying to imagine that in any other context, like going to church and it's like six days a week. It's Catholicism. We're good. 
but we're doing Islam Wednesdays. Yeah, that's like, a good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's it's a like, good point. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's like now the whole thing is thrown out the window. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, it's really just misunderstanding. When when they say the ecological approach, they just think live resistance, go as hard as you can, yeah, fight. Yeah. Just they figure it out. Yeah, exactly. They don't understand what it actually means because they didn't do their due diligence. Mm-hmm. And so, again, they're arguing. They're setting up a straw man big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for they're sure. fucking hacking away at that straw man. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I got mean, him, guys. <laughs> yeah. my, my first thoughts when I... I've, the first sound bites I saw of you was the heel hook situation. Like I'm sure everyone comes, well, how do you, how are you teaching heel hooks with live resistance? Yeah. That was my big hang up for a while until, mm. because I didn't understand right. Yeah. right. what was, what you were actually doing. For sure. I just caught the don't drill, do it all live, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I'm yeah. like, everyone's going to blow out their knees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everyone says that, but it's like, I'm actually very cautious of this because we have that reputation because we do all live work. I do not like seeing injuries in my gym. Mm. And they, like everyone knows I'm Mr. Glass. I've mm. broken and snapped and fucked up everything. And I don't want my students to be a reflection of my poor, mis- my, my past mistakes. So I want to make sure that if we're going to do this fighting on the edge, you know, living in the danger zone type of thing, we have to do it with, intelligence mm-hmm. we can't just fucking snap each other's shit right. but it, it isn't again it isn't the submission itself all submissions hurt yeah. all submissions mm-hmm. will cause damage it's the speed of application the intent yeah. of application uh the expectation of ac- application so exposure is our only medicine against this shit mm. so learning how to expose in a scalable way is how we stop people right. from blowing up their knees yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. if i hadn't done the homework myself at that time i'd still be sitting here across from you yeah. arguing yeah. that you can't teach leg locks that way. Right. Yeah. Right. No, for sure. I mean, do you think when I pick up Michael Turvey's paper and he was talking about how things just do things on their own, I was like, bet. <laughs> makes I, sense. Makes Perfect. sense. Yeah. I mean, it was convincing. And I was like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. just got done making peak and Anders Ericsson knows what he's talking about. So maybe, maybe he's wrong. Yeah. yeah. Right. So right. Right. every no, time I, I go through the CLA, I highlight stuff. I'm like the whole, the whole book's highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you just close the book and highlight the yeah, page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's all important. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Somebody right. saw that sitting on my nightstand. It was like, would read that at bed <laughs> before I go to bed. And uh, she was like, what the hell are you reading? <laughs> Don't, yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Constraints are not what you think. They are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lucky that a picture of someone climbing on a mountain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, if exactly. it was like a blank cover, we'd be in trouble. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Although my father, who was a who. Uh, we always talk about this. My father coached for a long, long time. I showed him it. He was like, oh, that's really interesting. Mm. But I know in my head there's no freaking way that he would want to understand any yeah, of that, yeah, right? Because yeah. he was like, you know, he's 70 whatever years right, old. Right. Like he taught the way he taught. And that was it. Yeah, like, of course. So yeah. pretty funny though. Yeah. For sure. Should we ask the questions? Sure. Are you at practice? Are you at a uh, Yeah, question? something I, I actually had been meaning to talk to you about. How do you approach <laughs> teaching privates? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know a little bit because sure. I know someone that's taken yeah. one with you, but I'd love to hear from you on that. No problem. I do it in one of two ways. Some people just want information. They want to be talked at. So if that's what you want, I'll sit there and bullshit with you for a while. No problem. There's value in that. I could change your perspective. I could point you in the right direction of where to search. That's fine. You know, conversation is mm-hmm. valuable. Um, but if I want to do like a, a skill private where I actually help you, I ha- you tell me what your problem is. Okay, hey, coach, I want to have better pins. Okay, well, uh, first of all, where are you in your pinning? Like, are you, do you, can you recognize your problems? What problems are you having? So we have a discussion about where they are. If they're new, they don't know anything, great. I'll just design a generalized pinning practice, give you some focuses, and see how you respond to these focuses. And I usually get somebody within a similar skill range to train with them. So let's say I have a, uh, you know, a moderate, you know, a three-day week, a blue belt athlete come to me. And I'll get another one that's like that, another similar age, similar weight. And then I'll be, hey, come help you out. I'll give you half the money for the private. Just come and help me out. And so I make them play the games with the private because there's no point in me doing it. Like it's not because if, if we if we exchange, I'm not going to hold back, so to speak. I mean, I'm not going to give you false information. I'm going to train with you as you really are and as I really am. And if the skill gap is too large, I, I can't tell what I'm doing right and you're doing poorly. Mm. So, <laughs> you know, because if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I should win these exchanges. Anyway, that's how I deal with it. Equally skilled opponent, relative same training time, to whatever degree I can control, uh, same size, stuff like that. And yeah, just have them guided along with what their problems are and I answer their problems. Mm. What's your typical clientele for those? Is it your students or is it outsiders, visitors? So, really, like I don't push that kind of stuff. Um, uh, usually visitors. You know, my students, I mean, I'm, I'm always there engaging with right. them. So they don't feel like they need it. Right. If they want me to stick around an hour after class, I will. They just have to ask. Um, so, yeah. And also, too, I charge differently. If it's my student, I charge less than if you're not. Because the thing is, is like, you know, I, I, I kind of want to dissuade people from always like trying to. If you're not training, man, that's going to start there. You don't yeah. want, I don't want to, I don't want your money. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. but no, yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of people visit and do privates with me. Yeah. I I helped Greg with all of his privates for the first year, so nice. I just got a bunch of free ones. I never yeah, had to pay for one. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, but now it's like yeah, he's becoming pretty skillful, so it's hard to use him because um, he's just going to beat everybody down. Um, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, that, I mean, that's what was happening. I had to realize, shit, I can't use him anymore because it's like it's bad. But I mean, yeah. So. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say like if it's a brown or black belt, it's no, it's a great trade right. partner. But. Yeah, I was. I heard. I can't remember who, but. Earlier this week, I heard or saw someone, someone else I was talking to in the jujitsu world. They, they don't do privates at all with their students, kind of for that same reason. They're like, mm. I'm their coach. I'm here. I'm accessible all the time. Like, right. you don't need to pay me, yeah, more yeah. than you already are for sure for the knowledge that you feel like you need for sure. So I'd, yeah, and I'll spend point. free hours. Like, I'll, like if you like, hey, I need you, right? So I was working with uh, two of my students, Nikki and Alex, last week. I said, hey, let's let's meet at eleven. You know, my student Alex was uh, not not little Alex, big Alex is not another Alex. <laughs> Uh, she was struggling with some like, I don't know, passing situations. So, or a, a destabilization from belly up. So we just, I kind of designed a practice for her, gave her some task focuses, see how she performed. And I just, just did it. Let's go. Let's do it on Wednesday. So we're going to do it again on Tuesday at 11. So yeah, I just, I, I, cause I want my students to know that I'm available. You know, I don't yeah. want to make everything a nickel and dime right. situation. Yeah, I like that. And then you see like, yeah, I've, I've seen other coaches out there like post their, like they ask for for privates and i'm like your private cost is literally the same as your membership amount and you have <laughs> students buying privates from you it's like they're just paying for a second membership yeah so this feels a little predatory yeah. <clears throat> yeah it's tough yeah yeah but you do need to sell oh yeah element so I, I want to man i, I, I love yes. element we yes. at the so. website there's yeah. a little form to fill out for a wholesale yeah. they'll They'll prove anybody. Yeah. Okay. Element. Yeah. Keep talking, guys. We'll get a we'll get a sponsorship yeah. for yeah. both gyms. Element. Let's go. Please, keep talking. Let's go, right? Please sponsor me. I will put it on literally any article of clothing that you want me to. I will wear it every single day. You heard it here. Just you send me free salt. But you know, it's really a real thing because I get the guys to try to recover between practices because really two hours of practice is actually tough. So if you do real live focused training, your two hours is almost reaching that physical mm -hmm. limit of you know junk. We're reaching junk volume at this point. Um, so we do like basically a 45 minute, that's what we hit using 45, 50 minutes uh, with the first uh, situations. And then I take a 10, 15 minute break. I tell everyone, man, get your sugar, get your salt. We got to recover because you got 40 more minutes, man. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we take that break, let everyone rehydrate so you can refocus and feel good. And it truly does help. I don't know to what degree, but we can feel the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, guys, salt your shit up. That's just amazing. For yeah. sure. It's yeah. the best. No, I mean, just like. If there's one day where, you know, I'm on point, like I brought like a huge gallon of water and my salt and I got honey and, it's, mm -hmm. and I have all that accessible in between classes. And then if I immediately the next day, like I forget all that, it's so apparent. I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> yeah. So now it's like, I, I, the first thing I do every morning is put it in my bag just so I don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> Cause if you do, you're going to regret it yeah, 12 hours later. Even if you don't care to sell it. Yeah. Get it half price for yourself. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. for sure. Because sure. I already buy. I already right. buy like bulk from them. So yeah, I'm, I yeah. didn't know there was a wholesale yep. program. Yeah, I was and it's not cheap, right? So like, yeah. no, no. Yeah. I'm yeah. on like a, a recurring thing. So we drink it. We use it mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, I run out before I get my my new. Yeah, uh, yeah get in that wholesale yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still got the lemon habanero discontinued. Oh, that's my wife's. We're yeah. talking about yeah. that. That's my wife's favorite I got an unopened box. <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on that one for 10 much years. Want that. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because <laughs> okay. when we got here, I saw how all the stuff you had available for everybody. I was like, don't you look at this. <laughs> I was like, come on, Greg. Where, where's all this stuff at? <laughs> Just we don't have you, anything. It's going to make yeah, you yeah. soft. It's like on one hand, I'm like, I like our, how grimy our gym is. Like, We don't have anything in there but the bats. And then I'm like, we should get a mini fridge. You're going to come in, Greg, and have that nice wood in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. LMNT thing yeah. in there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> it will turn into a soaking, wet, and disgusting mess in a week. So yeah. 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 Can't matter. have nice things. No, Not a standard right. jiu-jitsu. <laughs> it's, you know what's funny about the LMNT? And we'll just go down the rabbit hole here. We'll talk about them enough that they'll sponsor you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I tried Liquid IV fairly recently. I had had Liquid IV before, obviously, but like tried oh. it after drinking nothing but LMNT for a while. Yeah. And it was like, I'm drinking chemical oh yeah it was bad. so weird it's it's like, yeah, this yeah. tastes like ass it's like acidic yeah yeah, yeah it's weird well, if you look at the ingredients uh it's not so good <laughs> yeah so yeah it's a little yeah. sketchy yeah exactly yeah, it's exactly. just like a flavor packet it's and it's what yeah. it is yeah it's kool-aid yeah. right yeah. it was yeah. vile with sugar right yeah. <laughs> someone said to me like oh this is the other one's too salty and i was like no That's trust me point, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah if it's too salty you're not dehydrated right right all right so we liked i don't forget whether we asked you and did we ask them the question i don't remember i don't think we did or not so we always like to ask a couple questions yeah. to guys like when they come in. It's kind of our standard, our shtick, right? So when people ask you, Greg, you're at a barbecue, right? If for some reason, you're not at the gym. You're Imagine at a barbecue. I have friends. And yeah, yeah. If you had some friends that you were doing, right, right. Or, you, you, yeah. And they're like, so what do you do? What do you tell what them? What do I? I always hesitate. I always, I'm a teacher. 
because I don't, people don't understand. It's like, if I say I do jujitsu, even now, that this stupid name jujitsu makes them think of kung fu karate <laughs> and they look at you a certain way. Yeah. It's like, like oh, hi-ya. Like, I am a teacher. Jiu-jitsu is my medium. Okay. But I, again, I don't like to go into the nuance of it and I don't really like small talk. So I'm a teacher. Yeah. That's what I do. What, oh, what do you teach? Grappling. Oh, mm. cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where? I own my own gym. Oh, cool. That's congratulations, man. Great. Now we can go on to something else because you don't really want to know because once I start talking, I'm going to get passionate and I want to get into it. But no, I don't. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a guy, man. Yeah. How about you? What do you say? Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm a child. Yeah, yeah. No, I was, was going to say I think I, I answered this school. on the last podcast, but yeah. I'm young enough where I don't actually have to have a career. Or I can just be. I most people just assume I'm still in school, so I yeah. just either I just say that, and then I'm like, yeah, Russell. That's it. Flies yeah. under the radar. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not old enough where I'm like I have to. Your time's coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't have to be a functioning member of society. Yeah, yet, true. So, yeah. And where we live, that seems to be the only fucking question. Like yeah. we live in a high paced come and go career focused group, right? Yeah. So if you're 40 what years you old do? and you wrestle, you might as well tell them you're 12 and you live on the street. <laughs> yeah. 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 hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. No, I, I mean, people come up to me and they're like asking me about like, you know, scholarships and stuff like that. I'm like, I didn't apply to a single school, dude. Like I knew exactly what, what I was doing. What are you like, going to do with your life? Yeah. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this or, you know, uh, living under a bridge and, <laughs> Being addicted to amphetamines, you know. Both. Hey, both, that was my second yeah, option. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Listen, they both produce the same chemistry in my brain, so I'll be happy either way. <laughs> How, how's meth? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not as good as jujitsu, but yeah. it's close. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. It's more itchy. Remember, yeah. remember, remember Noah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, have to, you have to do it way more often to get the same effect. <laughs> what happened to that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. I, I always comment every time we ask someone that question, like, the majority of people probably say something similar. We said something yeah, similar. Avoid stuff. it. Like yeah, just avoid deflect. it altogether, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, or like, or what do we always say? What's the follow-up question? So you can kick my ass. Yeah. Oh uh, my God. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. world's the same. Yeah. Everyone's yeah, the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're all NPCs and you got the same script. Like, NPC, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like That's how you know he's young. <laughs> <laughs> but of course I could, asshole. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go. That's it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And if you say that, they're always like, oh, so happy about uh-huh. it. They're like, oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. And I always try to deflect with like, yeah, but I'm not a function member of society. You could pay your bills way better than me. Yeah. 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 All right. So now. The second question we always like to ask is, you are making your entrance to uh, the World Championships, you're making your entrance to your first <laughs> MMA fight, whatever it is, what is your walkout song? <laughs> BG Stand Alive. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. That's a great one. I don't, I swear to you, and I don't know how to describe this phenomenon, but when I hear that song, I feel like I want to fight. Yeah. That's so weird. It's, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the, I don't know. It's like, yeah. It's kind of like you and Kelly Clarkson do. It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just sounds it sounds hard in the non most strangest way. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Did you know that would be his answer? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, he's he's brought up staying alive every like every competition. He's like, yo, yo staying alive. That's a that's a fight song right there. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll give you to sound cooler. I gave you a, a second one. Uh, the second one would be "Keep It Thorough" by Prodigy. There you go. Okay. All right. Prodigy, Prodigy the rapper guys. or Prodigy the no Prodigy or, the rapper. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. What kind of music you guys listen to in the gym? Are you a no music gym? Uh, so when we train, I'm oh, sorry. When we train, we don't we don't listen to music unless it's open mat. Open mat is either like Sid will put on uh, some rock playlist. Noah will probably put on some 60s, 70s classic shit. Uh, and I do, you know, the old man hip hop shit. Yeah, yeah. Or trap. Yeah. No, yeah. The, the, most of the time when music's playing in the gym, it's me by myself cleaning the mats, listening to like yeah. 80s disco music. No I'm shit, like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to revise your answer? I don't yeah. know the answer off the top of my head, but do you want to revise your walkout song uh-huh. answer? Every single time somebody asks me it, I'm going to give a different answer. Do you remember what it was last time? No, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's the first song off the top of my head? Ooh, I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. That's a fantastic okay. song. I'd walk what? out to that 100%. You both gave answers I would never <laughs> yeah, have yeah. guessed in a bazillion years. Yeah, no, like, cause it's like everybody walks out to like DMX or like Metallica yeah. or ACDC. It's like, that's boring. But like, yeah, you walk out to like Jamiroquai or something. Yeah, it's like, that's, that's pretty good. funny. Yeah. Like, that's great. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. It's funny that you guys, so, so we always joke, um, the other guy, so I teach some of the fundamentals class. Another guy, Nate, teaches some of the other fundamentals Ooh. class. First thing I do when I walk in, turn the music on. Yeah, right? yeah. His class completely silent, yeah. and we'll joke like all you hear is like the Ooh, makes me uh, uncomfortable, yeah, like yeah. Yeah, you know the grunting and the breathing. <laughs> yeah. Even if I like turned it down to like you know talk, yeah, and then yeah. I, like I forget, turn it back on. I'm For like, oh sure. shit, it's yeah, all yeah. silent in here. <laughs> all I can hear is guys like groaning and yeah. you know. There's only there's two awkward things about not music. It's before class starts. 
And in the break, once everyone's tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, dude, I don't know whether it's a product of me or our environment. Nobody speaks. <laughs> like, we'll have a w- class about to be started, like, 6 o'clock foundation class. There'll be 30 people sitting in silence, not saying a word to each other. And I hide in the back corner. Until <laughs> so I don't want to have anything to do with that shit. And Because I'm comfortable with silence. But I yeah. can tell these people are just waiting to say something to me. And I'm like, I'm going to hide. Yeah. It's super awkward when you're... You're like onboarding a new person for their first class. And everyone's just out there not talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's it's like, right, well, I'm like, I don't want to talk to you either. So right. <laughs> no, no, I'm like, I'm like, this new person, go talk to him. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. I feel obligated now, like as I walk onto the mat, like get ready to teach, and I'm like, I don't remember that guy's name. Oh, I don't dude, remember that guy's name. And that guy's brand. I'm like, Pat, is that guy new? He's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, no, he's been here for three yeah. weeks. Yeah, I'm like, I, shit. I have to like give a caveat to visitors. It's like if I haven't trained with you, like at least five times, I'm not gonna remember your name. Like I might remember your face, but yeah, visitors, like, that's understandable. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. <sighs> yeah, even in the noon class, like if you don't show up more than like three days a week, I'm gonna be like, uh, guy, go so with many the people guy. Come and go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it gets worse the longer you're in it. I mean, you guys been along for a long time, so you get it. I was telling the guy earlier. I, I starting, I'm starting to forget faces. Like I'll have to see the same person multiple times to realize I've seen them. And I'm never, I've never been like that either. So either I have early Alzheimer's Alzheimer's or <laughs> there's some weird thing with meeting too many new faces I, mm. because it's like, they look at me as that they recognize me and that's confusing Yeah, yeah. because I'd never had my face recognizable before. So I'm like, why, why do you know me? You yeah. Know? Like that parasociality thing is kind yeah. of a weird thing to navigate. I'd imagine. Yeah, it's real strange. Yeah. Because, yeah, they speak to me as if we know each other. Yeah, like, right. I've yeah. never met you before. Well, For that's sure. different, right? Like, even seeing, like, oh, I recognize that guy from Instagram. Yeah, but them yeah. to talk to you like they yeah. know you is a weird no, thing, No, for right? sure. That is super weird. Yeah. Well, do you ever yeah. wonder, like, what effect that actually is? So, like, you're interacting with a guy speaking to you. So, you're looking at, and think about how human that actually is. We never had a technology where they showed us people talking to us about things we're interested in. We had to actually communicate with somebody. Right. So, is there a weird psychological mechanism that's taking place where it actually creates a bond between us as, and us and them? Yeah, yeah. In, in a, uni, a single directional yeah, way, way right? Right. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. That that has to be a thing. Yeah, I would think yeah. so. Yeah, you hear about people like. I, I don't know. I can't even think of a good context, right? But like YouTube stars, right? Yeah. And people yeah. are like, oh, I, I know them. Yeah. So no, we don't for really sure. Like them. celebrity stalkers yeah. and stuff like that, where like, it's like, the, or like I've seen wild stuff where a YouTuber will post a DM that they got from some random person. And it's like this massive essay about how like they're going to get married and like move to Costa Rica and have children. And it's like, they have, they literally have like this fantasy life, like imagined about this public figure. And yeah. it's like, dude, I don't know you. Like right. I'm not taking part in this fantasy, the world that you live in or criticizing. Yeah. Them, right? Like, yeah, Oh, you let sure. me down. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you broke my heart. And it's like, yeah. I didn't have any investment and in your heart, buddy. Too, like, yeah. I'm paranoid. Yeah. Of, uh, uh, about psychological disturbances. Um, cause I'm, I'm a pretty based and calm guy. Like other than of course my passion towards my work, I'm, I don't speak most of the day. I'm, <laughs> I'm a very stable person. I, I'm always the same bad or good situations. So when, when I get the people around me that spike, I get very nervous, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, you get people talking. They, I've had, I have people do it to me at the gym yeah. and that just like makes you real uncomfortable. Mm, yeah, you real for uncomfortable. sure. Yeah, it's like I've had the duality of people coming up to me like in a way in line and being like, oh, dude, your coach is Greg Souders, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, it's cool. And they're friendly and they're they're curious about the method or whatever. And it's great. We have a nice back and forth conversation. Somebody else would be like, yo, Noah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who the fuck you are, dude. Like, what are you talking about? That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're, they're like coming in ready to like dap me up or give me a yeah. hug. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. People don't respect the barrier, guys. Yeah. Not yeah. Not at all. Yeah. You know? We always say this. People are weird, man. That's yeah. just, just people are weird. For sure. So uh, Gordon and Ryan, and I have a mutual friend and uh, he was dropping him off at my gym and Gordon's uh, one of his, uh, he had a, this truck he had a while, a while back. One of his um, the runners in the bottom fell off. So we gave him some tools so he could fix it. And uh, he's like, yo, I really appreciate it, guys. What do you want? Like money? Went, oh, dude, chill. We got you, man. And he's like, well, you'd come to my seminar. I'm having it in Maryland soon. We'll go. And I don't go to seminars. But I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll go. And so we went. And there were like 200 <laughs> grown men there, okay? Grown men. I'm not talking about children. Grown men. And during the break, because he, he and Dan are both did like a section, they lined up with their belts in hand, with their uh, DVD cases, and we're having them sign it. And I'm sorry, guys, if you do it. I apologize. Um, but I'm like, they were treating them like, and you could tell like, Dan and Gordon are both uncomfortable. They're sitting there like cardboard cutouts as like a 40-year-old dude got between them like, and signed their stuff. And again, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to be overly judgmental here. But no, I was like, let it, let it rip. <laughs> We've already had this conversation. So yeah, go ahead. Let it okay, rip. good, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 
I, I want to be immune to that. Like, I'll take the picture and stuff or whatever. Like, hey, guys, you know? And I always tease them about it. They, they were like, uh, can I take a picture with me? Who the fuck am I? And I just <laughs> fuck with them, you know? But no, because, yeah, I don't know. They need to respect the barrier, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, I feel like there's a, there's a nice, thick, solid line that's very clear. Like, I respect this person, and, like, I, maybe I look up to them or, like, I appreciate what they say about X, Y, and Z thing, and it's like, I idolize this person. I think about them all day. Yeah. It's like their, their, like, predisposition and their emotions about the day is my emotions about yeah. the day. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> we literally, I literally said something similar to you earlier today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Just it's not weird. the, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, guys, what do you think? Ooh, we crank out an hour and a half? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Oh, dang. Very oh, good. A few minutes of peeing. Yeah, yeah. A few minutes of peeing, a few minutes of me screwing yeah. up the you know. camera. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was nice. a solid hour in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 No more, no more funny, weird questions about music? I don't know. <laughs> what do you, you talk about, about the long step pass? <laughs> <laughs> I think it defies human movement. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And we, but he practiced the long step 5,000 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I was sitting in like the waiting room to get my car service, listening to that podcast, and I was just like stewing. Oh. We yeah, yeah. And it's like, like – and it felt, it felt like, a, like an onion sketch where it's like this is not – how I'm choosing to teach jujitsu. Like this is a scientific framework that exists period. Like there's academia in this, there's literature, there's people way smarter than me engaging with yeah. this. This is a science about human movement. That's what it, yeah. yeah. What about the Tyne and Delper's long step though? And right. it's like, right. Oh my God, <laughs> what's happening? Right. I listen? forget what else he asked you a couple different things. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, what about? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I, I, I can't see Greg, but I can just imagine that his head is like swelling <laughs> with pressure. <laughs> and, 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 I, you know, actually funny about that. I felt, I honestly felt bad because so the, the, the whole our first meeting was like it the tone was fucked and it like it I got set off real early so I was already irritated going in because I was doing something at home and I was just frustrated I've been on the phone all day I get there and I'm I don't mind ask me a thousand questions but if you invite me on it, there's got to be a reason I'm there man I don't want to hear you talk I don't care about your opinion and I'm not I don't mean that in a bad way but I'm not I, I'm not you're asking me to be here so I'm here because you have something you want me to hear you say and so we started off with five minutes of him talking about what I'm doing. And I, okay, he's, I, listen, I like Matt. We get along. But anyway, that rubbed me the wrong way that first time we ever met. And then, so then it just, now I'm downhill. Mm -hmm. And then, and, <laughs> and then I felt real bad because then I was such a dick that people watched the episode and were like, man, fuck this guy's an asshole. And then I felt bad. Like, yeah, I really was. I, <laughs> God damn, I should have, I should have lightened up a little bit. And then the next time I'm like, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to be patient as fuck. I'm going to do, do everything I can to explain myself. And then we get stuck in those battles. Yeah. And it, you know, Matt, I know Matt's trying to understand too. No, no hate on that guy. I'm, I'm about to do another podcast with him. He wants me to come on again and talk about like game design specifically. That's cool, man. I'd love to be on there, but I get frustrated. It easy, man. Yeah, yeah, and I felt bad about that one. I truly yeah. did. I truly did. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it was frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> and a hard thing from like the perspective of the viewers is like they just see you getting set off by that one thing, but they don't realize that you've been asked the exact same question on twelve other podcasts. Yeah, if you've like followed yeah. the story, yeah, all, yeah, you, you should for know, sure. But, but it's like Greg yeah. is expected to reset to emotional baseline per interview, and it's like, oh, I don't know if it's that simple, you know? Yeah, uh, it's like people are mad at me because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Mm. It's like okay, I'll take it, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. don't expect me to be nice about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's understandable yeah. frustration, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So you guys are great though. I had fun today. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's always great. So yeah. I, said, I said it'd be nice to be able to sit down, Greg, and not have like confrontation or like just yeah, you know, yeah. like can we just sit down and bullshit? Right, like that'd right. be fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's all right. Next time we'll get into foreign policy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what is your approach to uh sex trafficking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were lit. I Were you guys talking about that already? <laughs> no, because, okay, okay, just real quick. I know you got to go at the end. I'm very sensitive to like the harming of the innocent. I like it's my most detestable, disgusting thing, and I just I can't stand it. I had a conversation with somebody. I don't know if I should say it on the podcast. Should I say something? No. It's up to you. Yeah, okay. who, who cares? Okay. Basically, long story short, I said uh, the raping of a child is the most disgusting thing we can imagine, and he said he could imagine something worse. We almost got a fist fight. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah, I get the fuck away from me. Of course. Like I called him a loser. I called him crazy. Like I don't get, I don't get emotional like that, but I, my heart was racing. I was shaking. So anyway, yeah, man, nah. <laughs> no one can talk to you, but I don't want to talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah. I actually won't because I don't want to ruin my career before it starts. Because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Greg will be over there pacing around. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah, that yeah. whole thing about LMNT sponsoring you? It's like, I just threw it right out the fucking window. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. LMNT, I was just kidding. It was the first thing that popped in my head. God only knows why. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway. Actually, it's terrible. That's why. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
guys, thank you so much. Of course, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, fantastic. For it was fun having you guys. Yeah, Agreed. you're awesome. We'll see. You've got uh, you've got to get to like three thousand views on this. Oh pod yeah, to no, for sure. Next I, the level. goal is to always be doing better than Greg is yeah. on whatever that carry him along. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that really is the goal, guys. Seriously, if he doesn't end up better <laughs> right. than me, I fucked up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.